Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending today's webinar. We appreciate your time, and we apologize for a couple minute delayed start here. Our, our webinar today is um, focusing on what every enterprise notes administration strategy needs for proper implementation and, and security that uh, you know that your strategies and policies are being um, properly implement, implemented and providing you with tools to um, make those changes and enforce those changes. The presentation will be done by RPR Wyatt today. And I just wanted to just introduce, introduce you just a little bit to RPR Wyatt. They are an, an advanced business partner. Their Essential Tools product was an early Beacon Award winner. It continues to be a force multiplier solution, meaning if your uh, notes admin staff is uh, undermanned and underpowered and too many uh, tasks to do during the day, then this is a solution that uh, you'll enjoy seeing. This solution is also a very customer-driven uh, evolution, has a uh, evolution path that has been driven by large organizations throughout the world. So you will uh, quickly recognize uh, the power that it's going to provide to you and your enterprise organization. The six key, key benefits uh, that you will recognize uh, for, for enterprise administration is the fact that it's a centralized monitoring management solution. It has a full ACL and security monitoring and enforcement package. You can uh, enforce or enact mass changes and make sure that they, and with a lot of confidence that it's going to happen correctly. There's also a auto res registration and user management uh, module to this. And of course, in every organization, we need to have audit trails and reporting. So you will see these benefits come up during the discussion about what it takes to actually have an enterprise administration strategy and how to implement it. Our agenda today is uh, the presentation will be given by Mustafa um, Jorgen Geoglu, the ET product manager from RPR Wyatt. Uh, on the phone with us as well is Jim Engel, the ET product consultant. During the presentation, if you do have a question, uh, please go ahead and type it in on your GoToWebinar panel. It will queue up the questions that it, so that I can read them to back to uh, Mustafa and Jim at the end of their presentation. After the presentation, uh, you certainly can share this uh, recording, uh, this webinar, uh, with your colleagues. It will be posted on the notescode.com website and just uh, navigate to webinars. And then, of course, you can always contact RPR Wyatt at their web address. Okay, that's enough talking from me. Um, I want to now turn the time over to Mustafa so that he can pre do the presentation about how you, the essential tools can enable a prop. I'm going to Excuse me one second here. I've got too many screens popping up. Apologize about that, Mustafa. I'm turning the time over to you now so that you can uh, do the presentation. All right. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Mustafa Erganjola. As Scott said, I'm the ET product manager, and I'm very and terribly sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, but I want to assure you the product ET is worth the wait. Um, Without any further delay, I wanted to uh, show you the uh, product that we have. Essential Tools is a customer feedback driven not admin tool and it is a major force multiplier tool which helps not administrator perform their uh, daily tasks as well as enterprise wide, -wide changes. Um, you can monitor and manage multiple servers using Essential Tools and um, basically you can monitor up to 15 or 20 servers from a single installation and these could be each of which could be uh, mail servers or application servers with uh, either two three thousand mail databases on them or very complicated or very mission critical applications uh, running on those domino servers um, what ET does is it collects um, detailed information about the notes applications and it presents to you the information in a way that makes sense and it also provides you ways to act on things that you might need to rectify. One example here could be that um, here you can see all the databases in your environment based on their um, 
database template that they're inheriting from. For example, the uh, address book. You can see that there are certain databases inheriting from certain templates. And if you don't want that, if you want to change it, you can select those and then quickly act on it with the appropriate, what we call request, uh, which is basically a transaction that you're defining. It will be executed within a minute or two, depending on your preference, and the changes will be implemented right away. I wanted to change the template to inherit from to something else, and here it is. This is the new template name. So all I have to do is save and close. This request will take effect in a few minutes, and um, the results will be emailed to the uh, designated people that it's completed, or if there are any issues along the way, you'll be notified. We do that to provide an audit trail um, so that any change is captured and can be audited anytime. So we have this centralized uh, management and monitoring capability, not only for nodes databases or database properties, but also the ACLs of those nodes applications. For example, the list you're looking at right now is the entire list of ACL entries in the enterprise. I started with two servers here, but it could have been 20 servers in a big corporation. Let's say I would like to remove the defunct name that I see here. This server has been decommissioned, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this ACL entry, Queen Creek Dev AC, from the databases that it shows up. Again, I select the document, I do an ACL change action, and the request is being prepared so that I can add the rest of the parameters and submit it. What we're doing here is remove the entry from these databases on these two servers. It could have been 10 servers, it could have been 20 databases. It's the same concept. You're removing certain entry and we have to add that. So in 10 or 15 seconds, what happened is I was able to browse through the ACL entries across the enterprise and noticed a uh, decommissioned server name, and I took action by removing the ACL entry from those databases in a few seconds. Um, as I said, this could have been more servers, more databases, but the point is that the centralized view here provides you the uh, um, uh, opportunity to locate cases like this and take action against them. So th these are examples of centralized monitoring and management for Domino servers. Um, ET also provides a variety and a comprehensive, comprehensive set of ACL and security management, basically. One of the things that it provides is the tiered administration. As you can see, I added Scott here as if he is an administrator, but he's not. What's happening is um, I have servers that I am manager of, and I have all the permissions for them. Uh, Natalia has all permissions for one server only. And Scott, for this example, um, he has certain entries, certain permissions for certain um, servers. Um, so all this leads to the tiered administration where people can submit requests based on their administration um, privileges and audit trail can also be 
used to figure out what has changed when and who has submitted those changes. The changes that I have submitted, for example, they can, they can be seen here. There are other changes submitted earlier, and they have their own um, transaction life cycle, such as being successfully processed or something is still waiting to happen. Um, these were successfully retired, and these um, requests had failed. To follow what's going on, we have to go to the ET log database where you can see the details of the audit trail. For example, here there is a um, uh, example where we are making some ACL changes and things look okay, but then on one of the databases, apparently I do not have the authorization to do that. So that's why this part failed, but the other part has succeeded. And again, by looking at here, you can go to the request, which led to these um, corrective actions. And you can see the details of who submitted it and when, on what servers it was supposed to take place, and who's supposed to get notified when it succeeds or it fails. These are all here. Um, other parts of ACL management that, and security that we provide include ACL enforcers. Basically, ACL enforcer um, is a continual process. ACL enforcement is a continual process. Uh, one example that I can show is, let's say we have these particular databases that we want to continually monitor and make sure that their ACL has certain entries with certain privileges all the time. And if, if that changes, we want to be notified and we possibly want to rectify it automatically. That's why we're monitoring this. Um, here's one example. Um, let's say there is one specific person group that I want in the ACL as editor with certain flags, whichever those might be. And I can choose those from my address book. I can manually enter them, whichever. And let's say I want the other domain servers to be readers. Choose other domain servers. What's going to happen is these two entries, um, local domain servers and other domain servers, will have to have these editor and reader, etc., rights all the time. And if there was a violation, we would be notified. And it would be overwritten. So if somebody changes other domain servers to no access, the process will reset it to reader, and it will notify us. These are selectable uh, options, so you can play around with them. The other option you can play around with is partial versus complete. If it's an ultra-sensitive ACL, you can set a complete ACL, which should include default, of course, such that anything else or any other change would be undone every time the process is automatically enforced. Of course, this is a less frequent uh, use, but if you have very sensitive ACLs, you can definitely use that feature. By the way, by default, this enforcement will take place every two hours, but you can change it through configuration. Um, in essential tools, we take pride in the fact that we can have enterprise-wide transaction capability. It could be ACL changes, copy entry or mail user ACL or any other um, request. We have about 15 plus requests which changes things. One example is the, uh, very quickly, 
ACL mail user where you can set the access level of the mail users to their mail databases in a single request. Of course, the point being that you can choose multiple users to do that. So you set the uh, access level at the designer and those flags, and basically you select people from the list, and then when you save close, all of these people individually will have their own access level set to designer in their own mail databases. Um, the power of this is that if there's a new corporate policy to lower down the access level from designer or manager to designer, you can use this. Or if it's whatever it is, let's say it's being changed to editor, again, you can adjust this from here and create a request. So the four, you'll probably end up selecting 800 users and save the request. And in a few minutes, it will get processed. And this task, which would have taken you hours, if not days, is taken care of in a few minutes. That is the uh, force multiplier effect that we were referring to earlier. Um, the other aspect of um, essential tools is not just changing the ACLs or databases, but also the fact that it can handle the user lifecycle um, events, such as registering new people, or um, maybe uh, if there are any um, organizational restructuring, and some entries have to be taken away from the uh, address book, um, you can handle those and mass using the Power Tools termination request. Uh, one example would be uh, campus hiring and letting go students every semester or, or um, contractors. Um, basically, you have several options which can be really useful to you, such as um, terminating people and adding them to deny access group. And you have the options to delete the person document or no. You have the option to forward their mail to somebody else or no. You have the option to um, delete their mail databases. And if so, when? How many days later? If you want immediate, you enter zero. If you want a future date, you can add the number of days to wait before automatic deletion takes place. Um, you can add mail manager. And you also have the option to back up the person document. You enter a database uh, path um, such that the process will make sure to copy the person documents to this location, to this database. So that when those um, when the next hiring season takes place, you don't have to go through the uh, process of um, re-registering these people. You can just move their person documents back into the address book, and that will save you time. Again, it comes to the um, force multiplying effect of of this tool, and, and, and the people that will have to go through this process, you can choose them from the address book, and you can basically get a um, uh, list of people in a text file, simple text file. You can upload it this way. Whichever is easy, it can be done with this um, request. So this is an example of um, user lifecycle example, as well as enterprise-wide transaction capability, the mass changes. I have also touched based on um, the audit trails um, as I said, it starts with the tiered approach in administration as well as the log database, which tells you um, all the transactions and all, all the findings that, is uh, that are taking place in the environment. You can slice and dice this by the type of the um, 
request or transaction that was performed. ACL change the date and where it took place and what the result was and all that. And you can also check it by date time or server. These options you see here, those are possible. If you want to focus on failures, you have the view for that. Um, the security manager also provides the database um, database related issues if the database is not um, if the database is corrupt for instance it's not it's encrypted it, I mean nobody can read it it's shown it's going to show up here um, whatever um, errors or um, changes that takes place in database properties it will show up here basically you'll see that the database property has changed from this to that one example um, the ACL has changed from this to this. You can see all the changes. It could have been a database property or ACL change. Um, actually, if we look at this a little bit more carefully, you can see that we are monitoring the prior um, uh, the state of the ACL entry to, and the new one. It was unspecified, then it became a server. It was manager, still manager, so the user type changed. What we can also provide here is we can set up a mechanism. Some of our big clients have, have this, especially financial institutions, such that they get a report of all of the ACL changes performed, and they also get an alert if um, anybody changes any ACL by by a, by a means other than using ET. If you are very serious about ACLs, um, that's one possibility you can explore. You get an alert in 60 minutes that um, such and such person changed the ACL of a database, such and such ACL entry was A, and now it's B. And it happened at such and such date and time. So these are the uh, monitoring capabilities that ET provides. Um, one other example for reporting is the effective rights results. Um, there are a lot of ways where ET can provide reporting about the uh, ACL, the current state, and also um, the um, changes that has been taken place. This report is about what are the effective rights um, of a given ACL name on the databases that you care about. So the ACL name Scottsdale Dev AZ is manager on these databases here. It is a lot of that. Designer on these, editor on these two, and depositor on mail.box. Nice. Um, you can also export this to Excel, where you can massage the data further and maybe create a report that uh, you can provide to your upper management. I uh, will show another example pretty quick, talking about creating reports for um, um, managers. I'll, I'll show an example there as this one shows up. So it's the same report that was showing up on the notes document, but it is in Excel format. And you can do your reporting here. You can basically do filters. Um, you can do filters on databases, for instance. Or you can do filters, all the capabilities that um, Excel provides. Let's say we want to focus on editor access level. Here they are. You can leverage the um, basic business intelligence capabilities of Excel and basically um, 
create the custom reports that no tool can possibly create, basically, because however great the tool is, there are reports that you will be asked which no tool provides them all. So you have to have the base data to um, generate that custom report. And ET is great at that because it does provide the base data to you. Here is one example. Let's say I want the ACL information. The entire spill of ACL information on one of the servers. Let's say just one. And this will be here. This is going to generate in an, another Excel spreadsheet where it will tell me all of the ACL information in details. This will take uh, apparently a few seconds here. So I was wondering if um, uh, if I could get some feedback, Scott. Um, any questions or anything I should focus on in the remaining few minutes? Yep. Okay, we do How have. Do this? Yes, we have some questions. So uh, one of the first questions is. Um, so how many uh, how many servers can be controlled by the by the essential tools? Um, we can talk about three digits. Um, one example that I can think of right now is a financial institution. They have five ETC instances, and they control more than one hundred servers in total. Um, so they installed in, on five different servers, and they're controlling and managing and monitoring more than 100 servers. They have the hardware resources to do that. That's an important factor because the tool has doesn't have a limit. I mean, we're, we're talking about the limits of uh, the resources, be it hard disk, network, memory, those kinds of resources. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, is there an undo feature? Um, that's an interesting question. There's no one undo feature. However, there's an extensive um, audit trail. Um, this is, as I showed before, in the form of the log, where it shows what the ACL was and what it changed to, and and depending on the case. Who did it? Um, so um, here's an example, real example from a couple of years ago. A client of ours thanked us, um, ET client, because um, they had a major issue, like non-domino related issue, which wiped out a couple of directories of applications from their domino system. and they wanted to restore the databases and their respective ACLs. What ET, the backup of ETNSF from that period of time provided to them was the complete list of ACLs, just like you're seeing here, or here's another example. The entire list of ACL, all the entries, all the flags, etc so that they had the base information to restore the application, the path, the ACL, and everything. Um, but there's no uh, magic undo button, if that's the question. However, we have the base information to guide you through the undo process. OK, perfect. Do you want to go back to that report, and then we'll continue on with questions and answers? Here's the report um, that we got. We wanted to get a dump of all the ACL information. So yeah, the database information, et cetera, rep including replica, the administration server, number of ACL entries. This is one of the, excuse me, 
tabs here. The other one is showing what each ACL entry is for that given database server combination, what their respective access level is, and read, write, etc. flag, user type, if there is any roles, they're all listed here. So if you're asked to provide a report where uh, you need this data to create the custom report from, then this is available. This is ACL information. Excuse me. This is the ACL information. And we also have the um, database information down to the um, um, finest details. But instead of spending time creating it, let me quickly uh, show some summary reports. This is another report, but before that, is there any other question? Uh, yes, we do have some other questions. Are you, do you want to continue on the questions, or do you want to finish the report? Yes. Questions, please. Okay, perfect. Um, what is the installation footprint of ET? That's an excellent question. Um, I thought the others were not. This is this gives me an opportunity to show that the essential tools. Um, There we go. So these are the five databases that we have. They're all in the same folder on one server. So this, this is the NSF footprint of one ETC installation, which, as I said, can manage up to 20 servers. In the other big client case, they were using it to manage more than 30 servers because they, had, because they had the resources to do it. But on the average, let's say 20 servers, each having two, 3,000 mail databases should be, can be monitored from this installation. We also have two server tasks running on this server, Anthem only, and you can monitor up to 20 other servers from this footprint. Okay, perfect. Um, next question is, we have a diverse, um, diverse organization with lots of business units. Can we delegate and control what the various admins can do with ET? Absolutely. And that's why we have the administrators administrator profiles here. Let's create one. Um, you have the ability to select administrators. I'm assuming they're in the same address book. If not, you can provide which uh, server they should, the, the address book exists and what is the name of the address book, and still be able to pull it. Um, you can specify the server that this particular administrator is going to perform his or her task on. Let's say Scottsdale or both or all. And then you have this, which is pretty detailed. These are the particular mm, tasks each of which requires a privilege to be able to, for, for the administrator to be able to do it. Um, these are say, ACL related reporting or change um, tasks. These are change name or create database. I'm just reading database information, code, distribute files, all these um, tasks. So, you can have one, two, or multiple, or all selected here. You also have this ability. Whether or not you're going to use Node's security model, uh, no means, I mean, ACL security bypass is the question. No means 
you're not bypassing node security. Yes means you are bypassing it. You're using server's um, clearance, server's privileges to make sure that maximum um, privilege is available. So you have several different ways to slice and dice this. If you step back, you can you can uh, say this. Um, you can have different instances of the ETC so that they focus on the different departments that these administrators will be taking care of in terms of node administration. So that way you compartmentalize administration by having separate installations on, 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 on your environment so that they each focuses on the department that this particular group is going to manage. Okay, perfect. I think that kind of segues into the next question was, would they be able to allow their help desk staff to use this tool to resolve issues, change ACLs? Yes, and there are two ways to do this. One of them is the um, one of them is the user database where the help desk people can come and create certain database or ACL change or other user management requests which will be um, automatically mailed to this database and somebody will have to approve it. It can be auto-approved, depends on what you want to achieve in the credentials and it will get processed automatically or by somebody manually approving the request. So if the help desk is provided access to the um, user database I just showed, they can enter the request and it will be on its way as a transaction to be processed. Another way we support this is you can actually email uh, your request in a certain structured text into ET and again it will follow the same path and you can have it either automatically approved or manually approved and it will get processed. So help desk has a uh, or sort of two ways to interface with this tool and as I said somebody let's say myself who has all server or all permission rights will have to approve that before it can be executed. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, next question is, uh, you know, admin P can do uh, some of these things. What what makes this better than what we can t do it with admin P? That that is a fair question. It's a, it's a pretty good question too. Um, admin P does some of these, and some of the, these things it does a pretty good job. But one thing, one weakness, for example, that admin two has. Uh, is that um, you have to have administration server set up correctly for it to work. I mean, there are things here, reporting capabilities that admin P doesn't do, that they don't overlap that much, but all the parts that they overlap, let me show you this. Um, ET can help admin P um, in the sense that Here's one report. Um, this report shows the administration server setting on the ACL. For admin P to work perfectly, this setting has to be done appropriately. But as you can see, I mean, just look at this snapshot here. Um, I wonder what it will be when you have a trial copy of ETC on your environment and you get this report. How good uh, can admin P work really? Well, if you have majority of your databases, ACLs, not set up properly for administration server, then admin P will not be able to process that database. It will skip to the next and leave this many databases unprocessed, like when you do change name and you do reader fields and author fields, etc. the ACL setting must be right. If it's not, it will fail. What you can do here is 
we have built-in help here. It says, in order to, well, this is a problem, and in order to fix it, you have to do these steps. But this is a problem because the administration server is, is uh, missing or it's set to the wrong server, etc. Let's say you want to add it, you have to go to this view and go to this sub view, administration server not categorized, and then create a request and set it to whatever it is supposed to be, click and save. But what it's saying is come here, administration server not assigned, find the databases, and let's say I chose this many, and I can create a request in a few seconds to set the administration server. I'll use Scottsdale, the underlying server itself. So my problem was there was no administration server. What I'm going to do is administration server Scottsdale. So basically I created a request to fix my problem. Yeah. So the administration server will be set so that admin P will do its job, whatever it is, um, without running into this issue. So just to recap, there is a certain overlap between functionalities. However, uh, ET provides a lot more reporting and management capabilities. And also, ET can help admin P to do its jobs better. Perfect. Okay, um, we're almost at the, our hour time, so I'm going to make a final call for questions. And um, if you'll type those in, that'll be great. One last question that's, that's already in is, uh, in the trial version, are these reports available or are they suppressed? Um, in the trial version, these reports are available. The trial version's limitation is the number of days it will run, but it does have the uh, reports available. Okay. Perfect. Well, I believe we're at the end of the questions. And uh, so we don't have any more questions. Mustafa, it's uh, your, your floor to make final uh, um, uh, comments. And then we'll go ahead and end the, the webinar. All right. Um, just to summarize about just to summarize this, um, the benefits of Essential Tools, it is a um, powerful tool. It multiplies the force of a given administrator or a core administrator team. It can do enterprise-wide changes. It allows you to focus on the things that are apparently wrong, or if you're given a task to do, you can find the, the base information to enable you, to empower you to create the report or uh, make the necessary corrective action. And like we said in the very beginning, it's a customer feedback driven tool. We made it to be the product that our clients want it to be. And um, it continues in that path to help the note administrators everywhere. Thank you. All right, perfect. Thank you very much for your time, Mustafa, and thank you everyone for joining us for the webinar. And just a reminder, this will be recorded and placed up onto the Notes Code website so you can share it with uh, your other Notes administrators and IT managers to show them um, how you can uh, use this tool to implement processes and changes and make sure that it's done correctly. Okay, thank you very much, and hopefully we'll see, uh, see uh, those that are with Lotus Sphere. We'll see you there at our booths. If not, uh, hopefully we'll see you at other shows or at other occasions where we can get together. And have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.